manipulating on the priorities of the tasks. Okay, let's uh, do some practice. So now we prepare the priority change lab. To do this, we need to include two components within FreeRTOS config. So V task priority set and UX task priority get to have the possibility of usage both functions to set and to get the priority of the task. And here is the illustration of the final effect we would like to achieve within our exercise. We will reuse the previously used exercise with two tasks, task 1 and task 2. In our case, uh, task 1 will have higher priority than task 2. We will have as well the idle task with priority lowest possible, so to priority 0. And within the task 1, we will increase the priority of task 2. We will increase the priority of task 2 by 1. And then within the task 2 function, we will decrease its own priority by 2. So in fact, the situation should be the following. Task 1 should be executed as only one, then SysTig will not change the context because the task 1 will be the only one on the highest OS priority level 2. So after first execution of task 1, task 2 will have the increased priority just below the task 1, but still below. So the second time slice, task 1 would be still executed. And again, it will increase the priority of task 2 by 1. Uh, so at the uh, second time slice, before the third time slice, so the second occurrence of SysTig, both tasks will have the same priority, uh, so OS priority normal 2. So the scheduler will select task 2 for the execution, and uh, within this code execution, task 2 will decrease its own priority by 2. So it will land to the level of OS priority normal, for example. And uh, after this operation, scheduler will notice that priority level of this task is not enough to be let's say fully executed so it will move this task to the ready state on the list uh, with ready tasks and it will switch the context to the task one which has the highest priority or as priority normal two and task one will continue the execution so it is, let's say, our target uh, for the application. As I told you, let's uh, use the previously done exercise. We'll just do some slight modification and try to have this effect on our boards. Let's have a closer look on the function which is used to get the priority of the task. So within CMC's OS v2, we've got the function OS treat get priority, which is returning the value of the priority of the given task which is an argument. This uh, function is uh, calling UX task priority get or UX task priority get from ISR, depending whether we are calling this get priority function from the task or from the interrupt. And this is, uh, again, let me highlight it. This is one of the advantages of CMC's OS API. You don't need to select by yourself the proper function, whether it is function to be called from the task or from the interrupt. It is the recognition whether the, let's say there is, we are in the task or we are in the interrupt is done automatically by the function itself. So this is one of the advantages of CMC's OS API. Okay, coming back uh, to this uh, task priority get function. So the FreeRTOS API is performing the following list of operations. As the priority is one of the key components uh, concerning the tasks and the uh, say operating system, the scheduler general, it is important to freeze all the operations of the FreeRTOS for the time we read the information about the priority of the task. This is why at the beginning we are entering into the critical section to avoid any parallel operation on operating system or change of the priorities. For this, we are using the macro task enter critical in case we are executing it from the treat mode, so from the task, or port set interrupt mask from ISR in case uh, we are executing this code from the interrupt procedure. Then the second step is to read the priority value from task control block of the given task. For this, the function prv get tcb from handle is used. And then we are extracting the priority value from this task control block structure. This is UX priority field. At the end, we are exiting from the critical section using task exit critical 
or port clear interrupt mask from ISR, depending whether we are executing the code from the application, so from the task or from the interrupt. Let's have a closer look on a function dedicated to set the priority for the given task. Within CMC OS API v2, we've got a dedicated function called OS Treat Set Priority, which is calling vtask priority set from FreeRTS API. This is not a, not to say, obligatory function within the FreeRTOS. This is why we need to include vtask priority set within the configuration file of FreeRTOS before we use this function. vtask priority set is defined within tasks.c file. We can see the body of this function there. N is performing the following list of operations. First, we are entering into the critical section to avoid any parallel operations on the operating system. And for this, we are using, we, let's say the API is using the macro, the function task enter critical. And uh, from this moment, all the interrupts related to operating system, so the interrupts related to SysTick, to PentSV, and all of the interrupts which are allowed to execute the operating system functions are stopped, are frozen, are masked using base pre-register. So after this, we can perform some operations on the priority of a given task. It is really important to have the rest of the operating system frozen at the moment, just to be sure that there is only one place where we are doing the modifications on the operating system. There would be no competition here. So once we are in this safe condition, we can check whether the task should not be moved to the different task list due to the new priority. Because it may happen that once we increase the priority of the task, the task could be moved from one list to the other. It's rather opposite. It's rather the situation where, for example, our running task has uh, the priority quite high. And then using this uh, priority set, we are decreasing the priority of the task. And after this operation, it will happen that uh, the task we are just modifying will land into the ready list, but much below that uh, the currently, uh, let's say, executed level. So in this case, uh, scheduler is really war uh, checking whether such a situation will take place, and uh, it is planning to switch the context in case of such a situation. At the end, we are exiting the critical section using task exit critical to unfreeze all the interrupts related to the operating system and resume the operating system execution. So after this operation, it might happen that our task, which we modified the priority, would be removed from the running state and the new task from the ready list would be selected by the scheduler. Let's start from stm 32 cubemx or the cubemx perspective with an stm 32 cube IDE. We will use the previously generated code with two tasks, task 1 and task 2. We will do some slight modifications within those settings. So the first point is to increase the stack size of both tasks to 256, just to be sure that um, the new functionality we will just add would be handled within the stack size we just specified. And uh, the second very important point is to enable two functions within the include parameters. So vtask priority get and ux task priority set. The enabling of those two components uh, should be done within the include parameters tab of uh, cubemx FreeRTOS uh, configuration. We will do only those two modifications and uh, we will generate the code for cube IDE or for the selected toolchain. One comment regarding the stack size. In case you will select too small stack size for the task, the effect can be the following, that uh, you may face uh, the hard fault handler within the code execution. It is a sign that uh, something wrong happened within, let's say, the free RTS execution, and most probably there is a problem with the memory allocation. So once uh, you will land within the hard fault handler while you are running the free RTS application, one of the first thing which needs to be checked is, uh, let's say, the stack size for the tasks and for the other components 
Of course, it is, it is much better to use some stack overflow protection for all of the components, uh, which we will discuss within the advanced topics. But if you are not using those, please check manually once you land in the some faults whether the memory allocation is correct and uh, you've got, uh, let's say, the correct settings for the memories uh, for the tasks and uh, for the other components. After the code generation, let's open main.c file and uh, let's modify start task 1 and start task 2 functions. Let's start from start task 1. Within this function, we need to modify to increase the priority of the second task by 1. So, in this case, we will use the initialization part of this function. So, as you can see on the screen, it is user code begin 5. And uh, I would declare here the local var variable. It is OS priority underscore T type called priority. It will be used to store the priority of our task 2. Then, within the infinite loop, I would read the current priority of a task 2 using its handle. So, I would keep it in within the priority. So, priority equal to OS treat get priority. And as an argument, I would give that handle to task 2. Then, there would be a typical action for task 1, so task action with argument 1, and then I would modify the priority of uh, task 2 using function OSTreat set priority with two arguments. The first one is a handle to the task I would like to modify, and the second one is the priority level, uh, the new one which I would like to set. So in this case, I would just increase it by 1, so I use priority plus 1. After this, uh, I just keep the time, so I put HAL delay for one second. As a start task, or in general, task 1 has a higher priority than task 2, I could use it here as well, OS delay, for one second. The effect would be dissimilar, because OS delay will send us to the red list, and within the red list, task 1, for the majority of the time, is uh, the only one which could be executed due to the high priority level. Let's keep it like this. This is task 1 function body. We are first reading the priority of task 2, then setting it, increasing it by 1, and waiting for 1 second. We need to modify as well the function body for task 2, so the function start task 2. And uh, here as well, we need to specify the local variable of type OS priority underscore T. This uh, local variable would be named uh, priority as well. And uh, within the infinite loop, I'm just reading the current priority of myself. This is why the argument is task to handle. Okay, so I'm reading the priority of the currently executed task, in this case task 2. Then I'm trying to perform the action, so task action with argument 2. And at the end, I'm decreasing the priority by 2 of task 2 as, uh, again. So there are two arguments. The first one is task to handle. And priority minus 2 is the new level of the priority of this task. There is one more thing it would be very good to implement here as well, to add here as well, is to read the status or return value of this OS treat set priority function. To be sure that everything went OK and the function completed successfully, you remember this OS status underscore T value. So to be sure that uh, everything uh, is going smoothly within the FreeRTS based application, it is always worth to check the status of executed functions especially those ones which are referring to quite important part of the operating system execution. Please have a look. Task 1, as it has higher priority than task 2, is executing and within its uh, function body it is increasing the priority of task 2 by 1. So we can see two executions of task 1 and then there is a situation where both tasks have the same priority. So task 2 is executing once, it is decreasing its own priority by 2, so again it is giving the space for task 1 only. So we can see two executions of task 1, which increases the priority of task 2 again to the same level, and then task 2 can execute once, and the situation repeats. Thank you for watching this video.